All right, so Prusa Slicer, um, you can't use it for 3D labs by the looks of it. However, Cura does work pretty well, but there's also for the Ender, Creality Ender Pro 3, um, they provide their own slicer. And you can, uh, for 3D Labs models, um, pull in an INI file from the Cura settings. So you normally get this with a model. I think it's under the SDL files or somewhere like that. Or maybe I picked it up from somewhere else. Um, in fact, if I go and have a look at, uh, let's go and have a look at P51 slicer setting. There you go, Cura. You can, I think, you, I think I must have picked these up from 3D Labs or somewhere. One of the, any anyway, one of their um, packages you download from 3D Labs. So there's an aileron elevator inny, a thick inny, a wing fuselage inny, and a wing tip inny. If you have a look inside of these, you can actually see pretty straightforward the settings. So layer height 0.25, wall thickness 0.4, retraction enabled, um, solid layer thickness 2, fill density, print speeds, temperatures. In fact, that print bed temperature should be 60. Um, support none, because you don't generally use support or rafts in these. You use a brim or a skirt uh, close by with three or four um, layers. What else is in there? Not much else apart from... The, Usual settings, filament diameter, flow rate, there you go. There's a flow rate of 102, and you have picked that up from somewhere. Nozzles, retraction speed, retraction and mount. Uh, in fact, that's for a Prusa, that's not for um, retraction speed, it's normally about 50, if I'm not mistaken, and a retraction amount is normally on the ender. 6.0 as I've just discovered by having a look at the ender settings that come because you set this up in the Creality slicer so these aren't exactly matched for your printer so you'll need to um, let's have a look at these yourself uh, what else is in here that might be useful if you want to use Z hop well you can set those anyway in in, in this, so I won't bother setting any of these, but yeah, this is typically what you would see. Um, we'll just save that away. So you pull these in, and I've already pulled one in. Um, I've, so I've already, I've already pulled in the aileron because I'm cleaning off the aileron. Um, layer height then 0.25, nozzle, retraction. Yes, I want retraction. Top and bottom thickness two millimeters, fill density zero. Yeah, that next definitely needs to be 60. So it is getting that from the profile. Print speed is good. You could slow the print speed down a little bit. That would improve the quality. Uh, so it's up to you how fast you run. Uh, no support. Flow rate 102. Nozzle diameter. Uh, 0.4. Um, advanced retraction print speed. Yeah, it is pulling these from the INI for sure. Uh, pretty certain that needs to be 50. Oops. 50. And then we need a retraction distance of 6.0. That's correct. For for the ender. Uh, because I checked already in the settings um, when I chose the machine type. And for sure it was 6. Mine, mine was 4.95. I'm going to go with 6 and see what it comes out like. Initial layer th thickness 0.3. Initial layer width. Yeah, they look okay. Um, I don't want fan cooling. There is a fan in the print head. But there's an additional fan that 
he, uh, cools the nozzle um, as it's printing I don't want that enabled because we want this to remain fairly fluid and hot so that's good control E gives you more expert config settings I've switched combing us off uh, Z hop yeah that does need to be point two um, if you want Z hop retraction um, skirt distance should be zero because effectively acts as a brim and the line count's going to be three um, what else do I need on here these are the settings that are squirreled away inside of Cura called Fix Horrible. Um, they're also in, I think Simplify 3D calls them fi Fix Horrible. Um, but you turn them all off, every one of them, just turn them off. Um, all of these, if you don't have them off, will stop the, um, the multiple parts. Remember, these... Um, 3D lab models are made of multiple parts. They have trusses inside. The trusses are not meshed or attached to the wall. Uh, and it's using Simplify 3D to sort of join those together. Well, Cura has those settings as well, and I've already pointed them out. Also, this is based on Cura, I gather, uh, from people talking on the internet. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm not going to change anything else. I think, oh yeah, I could... I'll leave it as lines. Obviously, it's not as sophisticated as uh, some of the other slices, but I think that's the main ones. And then what you do is that you go, obviously pull your file in through load. Um, view mode, that's normal. So you can see the, the trusses inside. Um, if you come down to transparent, a bit like X-ray, if you come down to, uh, or X-ray, if you come down to layers, uh, it's obviously slices this automatically. It doesn't have a manual slice mode. Uh, but now that I come through, you can see it's showing me all the tool path where it's actually going, but also I can see all the internal structure coming all the way down to the bottom. Um, now then, same hotkeys, hold the shift key down and you can hold the right mouse key uh, to move the uh, position and then um, right mouse to rotate and then zoom in so you can see how the layers are all built up. It's pretty neat. I quite like it. Um, we'll see if it prints. That's the <laughs> the moment of truth will, will, will be just to see if it does what it looks like it's going to do. Uh, so, it's, you know, there's a set of basic settings, uh, a set of advanced settings, and then there's expert control E for all these additional, <coughs> excuse me, settings. Um, I think Cura's got the edge in the terms of functionality and settings, <clears throat> but it's not bad. So I've set it for my end of three. Um, yeah, we'll give it a go. We'll see. Uh, we'll see how this goes. And when you finish with it, you can just save to your G code. It doesn't have any mechanism for talking direct to the printer, although it does have serial port support, but then that assumes you'd have the laptop close to the printer. So just save it as a G code and drag it and drop it into OctoPrint. All right, so we're going to give it a go. And I'll let you know how it prints out later. I'm, I'm, what I'm specifically interested to know is how well on the ailerons, let's just get this into position. How well on the ailerons will it print out these control horns? Because these are really problematic um, to print out. They seem to be way too thin. Um, 
Let's just see if I can zoom in, zoom out there. Yeah, these tend to be way too thin, but when I've looked at these layers, they do indeed look like they're going to print out okay. All right, that's it for now. If you've got an Ender or any Corelity uh, printers, you might want to try out their slicer and give it a go. Um, catch you later.